everyone welcome to scholar ias current affair classes hope you are all set so without any delay let's get into the classes the first article is on asteroid impact okay this is an article from indian express students this article is related to both prelims as well as mains in mains it is related to gs3 paper technology section as well as in gs1 paper geography and in prelims it can be related to current affairs okay and also in general science first let's understand what is in the news a large asteroid of almost the burj khalifa size so it's the tallest building in the world so of that size is expected to pass close to the earth and it is believed that it would not cause any damage to the earth so this is what it is about let's see let's try to understand what is this asteroid about and what are the factors that are involved in it okay so the asteroid has been classified as a near earth object okay so any object any group of asteroids or comets comets that are attracted to nearby planets due to our gravitational attraction due to the planet's gravitational attraction are basically referred to as near earth objects and these objects are may, uh, mostly com uh, composed of water ice dust particles and they come close to the earth when they are revolving around the sun when they are orbiting around the sun and this this particular asteroid has been listed as a potentially hazardous asteroid pha okay so this is this classification is based on the threat level that the asteroid poses to earth okay and this is done by nasa and phas are defined nasa defines pha as the min, based on the minimum orbit interaction intersection distance of 0.05 angstrom unit angstrom unit is nothing but a measurement unit of wavelength of light okay so students you will have to understand you will have to remember two things here one is potentially hazardous asteroid and near earth object these two terminologies can be asked in prelims as a question okay so make sure that you get, uh, understand these two terminologies so we saw that the scientists believe that this particular asteroid the new asteroid that has been observed would not make uh, any destruction to the would not bring any destruction to the earth let's understand why it is not said to have any harmful impact first is there are billions of asteroids in this solar system and of this 1 billion almost it is estimated that 1 billion of asteroids are just 1 meter in diameter and for any asteroid to make any significant destruction it has to be at least more than 30 meter in diameter and in this criteria nasa categorizes any any asteroid that has diameter more than 140 meter as a great concern asteroid okay because it has the impact that it could make the destruction it could create is huge based on that it has uh, it classified nasa classifies it as a great concern even this particular asteroid the new asteroid asteroid 153201 despite being a huge despite its huge size is not considered as a concern because the distance that between earth and this asteroid is more than the distance between earth and the moon so the scientists believe that it won't make any bring any destruction to the earth and even nasa has estimated that for next 100 years there would not be any significant chance of asteroid bringing destruction to the earth so this is the status so that's why this asteroid is considered to be not harmful okay despite nasa saying that for next 100 years there won't be any destruction from an asteroid what if nasa is wrong how are we prepared to actually face uh, an as asteroid that would impact the earth so there is a mission to deflect the asteroids deflect the trajectory of the asteroids so that is asteroid impact and deflection assessment it includes two missions that is nasa's double asteroid redirection test mission and esa european space agency's hera mission okay these two missions these two missions combined to form this aida okay the uh, the aim whole aim of this particular mission is to deflect an asteroid and their target is didymos okay this is a binary near earth asteroid that that has a potential to threaten the earth that is basically bring destruction to the earth students one thing that you will have to remember 
remember the mission uh, components of this particular mission aida both nasa and esa are involved in this so it can be a potential question in your prelims and the mission names you will have to remember the mission names as well as the name of the asteroid okay so remember make sure that you view these uh, points for your prelims and make use of it okay we will move to the next article the second article is on gender equity so this is our, this is also from indian express paper it is related to your gs1 mains paper uh, because under indian society topic because there is a section called role of women and women's organization okay so under this section a question can be asked so what is in the news the news is that dst that is department of science and technology is actually drafting a new science technology and innovation policy okay so the main focus of this particular policy is to increase the participation of women in science field okay in relation to this a program of uk has relevance that is athena swan so it is an evaluation and accreditation program of uk that aims to enhance the gender equity in stem field stem field in the sense science technology engineering mathematics and medicine streams okay so the main objective is to enhance gender equity in these stem fields and here for this program the research organizations are required to analyze data on gender equity and based on that research based on that analysis they will have to develop actions for improvement the institutions that address the actual problems in their organizations would be recognized and rewarded okay and what are the what are the basic broad issues that they will have to address or one is the unequal gender representation next is pay gap gender pay gap next is the obstacles that women face in career development and discrimination for transgender people and sexual harassment these kind of these are just an example of such issues so similar issues needs to be addressed by the uh, institutions under this program and if they address these issues they will be given recognition as well as they will be rewarded based on the assessment done by this pro under this program a 2019 report stated that 93% of the participant in this program had a positive impact on gender issues that is it created an impact on equality and diversity issues okay so basically it improved the career progression of women it had a positive impact by uplifting or enhancing the opportunities for women in the stem field and they also said that it had led to 400 percentage increase in athena swan application for medical streams so what what does this have for india what does this contribute for india this new draft policy that is being drafted by the DS, dst tries to incorporate this aspect this aspect of athena swan in the form of gati gati is nothing but gender advancement through transforming institutions okay students remember this particular gati form because it could be asked in your exam prelims point and also this dst found that women are not either promoted or gets dropped out in the mid career because of family issues so these are the issues that india face so based on this they are coming up with a uh, policy new policy that would incorporate this gati idea so now we know the broader issues faced by women in the stem field so where lies the solution to address these issues see and in dst policy the draft policy aims to bring in the change through institutions because most of the institutions are under government control and through policy recruitments and promotions a direct in impact can be made so to do this to enforce this new plan dst has tied up with national assessment and accreditation council under the ugc you know that union grants commission to push gender equity through them okay and gst runs a plan to run gender sensitization programs and also include women members in selection committees during recruitment process so these are some of the solutions that dst tries to bring in through the policy students remember whenever there is a question on gender equity issues you can take the science aspect of it science uh, how women are not how women are facing discrimination in stem field and you can use it as a point if if a question 
generic question on gender equity says you can bring in more dimensions this is a possible dimension where you can use these points and make your answer better than others okay so make sure to make a note of these points okay the final article is on malnutrition so this article is from the hindu this is related to your gs2 paper okay means and under the section issues relating to poverty and hunger so this article on malnutrition has surfaced because of two reports that have been released one is state of food security and nutrition in the world 2020 and the next one is 2020 hunger report students very important these two reports are very important they might ask you a question asking which organization releases it so the first one the state of food security and nutrition has been released by fao food and agriculture organization and the 2020 hunger report has been released by bread for the world institute okay remember this it is very important for your prelims and second one is uh, second point is uh, there are indicators that have they have come up with one is prevalence of undernourishment and next one is prevalence of moderate or severe food insecurity pm sfi so these two indicators indicate that show that india is the most food insecure countries one of the most insecure food secure country okay and the report also indicates that india has the highest rate of churning and wasting among south asian countries so pou measure that is the prevalence of undernourishment measures the percentage of people consuming insufficient calories so this is what pou measures this is also important for your prelims they might ask what it is related to what is pou related to and pm sfi this indicates the percentage of people living in households that are severely or moderately food insecure students remember these two indicators they could again potentially ask in prelims so as per the report india has drastically reduced its poverty levels but malnutrition has not declined at the same phase as poverty so it is estimated that india has reduced pou that is the prevalence of undernourishment at 24.7 percentage between 2001 to 2018 but still it is less than our neighboring countries like nepal pakistan and afghanistan and even in india 375 million people of the total population was moderately or severely food insecure in 2014 now this particular count those the population who is moderately or severely food insecure has risen to 4 450 million in 2019 students there are many facts involved here these could be used for your mains answer writing to substantiate your answer you do not need to remember all the numbers and figures but you can get a broader idea about india's position so it how it has either it has worsened or how it is uh, performing comparative to the, its neighbors so this gives this can be used in your answer to substantiate whatever points you are conveying okay what are the issues see we know that parliament legislated nfsa that is national food security act the main objective of the act was to provide quality food grains at affordable prices but what has happened it did not this nfsa under this nfsa pulses were not included similarly it also excluded many potential beneficiaries so this impacted the nutrition level of the people and in the current situation that is the covid during the covid pandemic this situation would have worsened further because vulnerable groups are prone to malnutrition so how do we tackle this issue the way out is to universalize pds that is the public distribution system and distribute quality food items and innovative interventions has is are needed like you know community community kitchens that they do in particular religion like sikhism brings in community kitchen so these kind of innovative ideas innovative interventions are needed second thing is the major work should be on utilization and expansion of existing programs right now nfsa is a good program but it is not catering to all the beneficiaries there are potential beneficiaries beneficiaries who are left out of the program if they can be brought in and this scope of this program can be expanded then they would be able to get the benefits of this particular program so these are the things that needs to be done to avoid the issue of malnutrition so students we have come to the end of this session end of this class so hope you are all uh, happy with the class 
if you want more videos more content on current affairs and more content on static path please visit our website scholar.com happy learning see you bye bye